Hey guys, it's Jessica and today I'm going to share with you 10 cult favorite products in the beauty community, whether it's YouTube and magazines, from you know blogs and makeup artists. 10 cult favorites that I think actually genuinely deserve that cult status. So these are products I've loved for, I think most of these I've loved for quite a long time and it was so fun going through my collection and finding these because I was like, man, like people talk about these a lot and they're totally worth that hype. So. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm already out of breath. Okay, <laughs> slow yourself down, Jess. Whew, all right, first favorite, cult favorite. I have a few drugstore ones in here too. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Shadow. It's in the shade Amber Rush. Really, the, the cult status, the hype is behind all of these, but this shade in particular is a very popular one. This I've been wearing tons, just all over the lid and then blended up into the crease. I'm not wearing it today. Um, but it's just this gorgeous bronze shade and oh my goodness, when you put it on your eyes, it just catches the light so beautifully. What's great about these is they are technically like a pigment and it's just kind of pressed down into it. So the more you use it, cause I always use it with my fingers, it kind of tamps it down, but it never affects the quality of it. I feel like I've had this for probably far too long. Um, I know I have replaced it at least once, so it's not like this is my original one, but I feel like I'm never going to run out of it, and this is my favorite shade. So it stays on all day, absolutely gorgeous shades. There's tons of shades to choose from, so if you're not a big fan of a bronzy look, they have one, I think they still sell it called Ice Latte, which was a favorite of mine for a very long time. I still like it, I just don't currently have it. Love these, totally worth the hype. Next product that is worth its hype status, its cult status, is the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. Are the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. This one that I currently own is in the shade Raquel, which is just a really pretty nude. Here, I'll put it on my lips right now because I just have uh, like a gloss on that I was trying for another video. Um, these are the creamiest lip products. And there's so many shades to choose from. And they, hold on. So, super creamy, now I've got it on, now that I stopped talking long enough to actually put it on. So creamy, very, I wanna say long wearing in the way that it's comfortable as you wear it. But you do have to reapply. It's still a normal kind of satin lipstick. It's not a matte, doesn't dry down, which is what I prefer. Now I also love my Marc Jacobs Lamar. I'm pointing back there because they're right back here, my little babies. I do love my Marc Jacobs Lamarck lip creams. These might actually be creamier like it doesn't pull as much on your lips as you're applying it. I love both of them though so much. So anyway, this is one that I used to have another shade and I don't know what happened to it. I feel like I left it in a hotel room or something. So I, I wanna get more shades in this because the more I use other lipsticks, the more I realize, you know what? This really is one of the best lipstick formulas I've ever tried. So if you can find a shade that you love, buy one and it will be your favorite lipstick in your collection. It will be your favorite. Another favorite that is a favorite, oh, mine, is another drugstore one. This is from Essence. It's their Pure Nude Highlighter. So many YouTubers talk about this. I finally broke down and bought it maybe a year ago. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It is so beautiful. It's, it has this gleam to it that it's hard to capture in a swatch, like really hard. But when you put it on your face, I'll put it on the tip of my nose, I'll put it up kind of even up on my brow bone. It just looks so beautiful and somehow natural too. The only thing I've had that's come close to this is one from Laura Mercier and it is, you know, like triple the price if not quadruple the price and this one's just as good if not better. So this is one that it's worth the hype. If you have not bought this, it's like, I wanna say around $5 if even that. It's so worth it if you can get it where you live. Another cult favorite for a good reason is from MAC. It's their Pro Longwear Concealer. I recently repurchased this because I hadn't had it in a while. I loved this for so long. And I love that it's got a pump. The only thing about the pump that drives me crazy, it's hard to control how much you get out. And I know a lot of you guys have talked about that too. Like, I love that it has a pump, but at the same time I hate it because it's hard to control and I totally agree with you. Um, and it's very rare, I feel like, for a concealer to have a pump. It's very um, interesting packaging. But this stuff is so creamy and almost liquidy and you can just, I mean, you could cover your whole face with this. You could mix this with a moisturizer and make a freaking foundation with it. It's got such nice coverage, yet it's so lightweight and thin. And if you have dry skin like me, it does not emphasize dryness and that is huge, huge, huge to me. And very hard to find, I'm, I'm realizing. So I love this stuff. 
There's a reason makeup artists love it as well. Holy moly. If you're curious, I have the shade NW15. While we're on the MAC train, this is the last MAC, last MAC product I'll mention today, is the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. I'm struggling today. <sighs> This is my travel size. I need to buy a full size. I've been using their charged water, but I realized that that particular one I have is now like discontinued. I'm like, no. So, but I love the Fix Plus just as it is. It does this magical thing where when you put on a loose powder or even a powder foundation and you spray this on top of it, it just like seamlessly melts the powder into your foundation or into your skin. It's the wildest thing. And it's one of those things that if you've never used it, you'd be amazed once you start using it. Now, if you've got crazy oily skin, I still think it would work fine for you if you're using it on top of like a very mattifying powder because it doesn't make your skin look oily or glowy by any means. There's no glitter, nothing like that. It just helps everything blend together. And I do think it might, because of that reason, help the longevity of your makeup as well. So totally worth the cult status in my book. Another favorite's from Becca, their Shimmering Skin Perfector. I have it in the shade Opal. I would love to try another shade of this because I do think I'm, I'm used probably, I don't know, it's about down to there as I kind of look into it. So I've used quite a bit of this and I do think Opal will work with my skin, but I think a lighter shade would work better with my tone. But what I do is I'll squirt some of this onto my hand, kind of blend it in and then take a sponge grab a little bit and then just tap it into that area. And it looks so beautiful, so seamless. It doesn't look like a strip of highlight uh, because you're using with that sponge and you can kind of use that to kind of blend that area in a little bit better. And it just stays on all day. It doesn't look powdery. It doesn't emphasize all of those, you know, crow's feet and dry, dry lines. You know what I mean? Any of that weird texture you have here, I've got it too. It doesn't emphasize it. And I, I think it's because it's cream based, you know, it's kind of liquidy. It doesn't dry down, but it doesn't like wipe off either. So it, it just sets really perfectly, I guess. And I just love it. And like I said, I feel like I would use it even more. I actually, I've used this so much. I've traveled with it a lot. The little lid is actually cracked, but definitely worth the cult status. Gorgeous. Next favorite, we were talking about loose powders. This is a very famous one from Laura Mercier. They're translucent loose setting powder. I've used this for years. This is probably the third one of these I've owned. And I own tons of loose powders that are very good. But there's something about this one that when you put it on, A, it definitely holds on to the makeup. This is one of those powders that absolutely increases the wear time of your foundation like a million fold. When I don't wear this, especially on my nose, like I always have things break apart on my nose foundation. Sometimes my nose is so red I'll need concealer on it too. And if I set it with this, it stays perfect all day. If I don't, it doesn't. I mean, it really is the difference between, I mean, it's night and day. And so I love this stuff so much. I, I can't recommend it highly enough. I've found drugstore powders that are good, they're close, but none of them are as good as this. And the reality is this is, they last me forever. Another cult favorite is the YSL Touche Club Blur Primer. I am incredibly picky with primers because I have dry-ish skin. I typically just like hydrating primers. I don't like pore filling ones. I don't like uh, really silicone-y, velvety ones. There are some that I do like and I do use, but they're certainly not my favorite. But this one is a very velvety feel kind of a primer. It's got a nice pump. It's really pricey. It's so good. So it's like a gel and it just makes your skin feel like a baby's bottom and it holds onto foundation so beautifully, especially for me on my nose. So if you've tried a lot of those like thinner, more like pan kinds of primers that are very velvety and you just get a little bit on your nose, if you've noticed those don't work as well for you, it might be worth trying one like this. It has, the only gripe I have with it is it has these tiny, tiny gold flakes. I don't know if it's real gold or not, frankly, I don't really care, um, but I do know that they don't really show up on your skin. I just don't really know why it's in there. Regardless, it doesn't really affect it for me either way, so don't let that turn you off if you see that, because I'm like the queen of I don't like glitter all over my face, and yet I still really love this. So don't let that be a turn off for you if you're thinking about trying it. All right, the next one is from Too Faced. This is their original chocolate bar palette. This is what started it all for their palettes, because then came the semi-sweet and the peach one, and then a million, a million others. Um, and they had other palettes before this that were really famous, but this was kind of their first hit that was in this kind of a shape 
packaging. Does that make sense? And so many people swear by it. I do too. And it's one that when you look at it, it's got everything you need for a neutral look, but then it also has a couple of pops of different things that can really change your look up. The shimmers in this are freaking gorgeous. The mattes blend so beautifully. I, I travel with this so much because we do travel a lot and every, I never miss any of my other palettes because this has everything I need. It really does. So it does smell like chocolate. So if you're turned off by that or turned on by that, you know, it, that is definitely something. And as I've said before, it tastes like chocolate too. So those are my 10 cult favorite favorites of mine that are cult faves. Anyway, that made no sense, but I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I hope you'll subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.